This video explains how to use the Mini DSO DS211 digital storage oscilloscope. It is a small and portable digital oscilloscope and a function generator. It has a maximum sampling rate of one mega sample per second. That is the uh, how many measurements uh, are taken per second, and it is uh, 200 kilohertz analog bandwidth uh, oscilloscope. That means that it that is the maximum frequency of the input signal which can be scanned with minimal amplitude loss. But I recommend at least 10 to 20 samples per cycle. Therefore, the scope is adequate for measuring not too complex analog signals of up to 50 to 100 kilohertz. The maximum input voltage is 40 volts peak peak. And uh, it, is, uh, it has a 2.8 inches screen with a resolution of 300 uh, 20 by 240 pixels. It has a USB port for loading uh, firmware updates or uh, getting files recorded and also charging the, the battery. The input to the scope and also the output from the function generator. And here is the switch. You see here a 10 kilohertz sign function generated by a function generator that I have connected to the to the oscilloscope, it comes with an X, a 1X proof. Okay, let me show you what is in the screen. What you have here is the, first of all, the grid, that are these lines, this uh, grid of lines. And here you have the, uh, the parameters area. The first one is the battery status. This one is the input channel scale in volts. So it is the distance between two lines, two consecutive lines in the grid. This is the, the coupling, AC or DC, the time base, that is the distance between two vertical lines in the grid in time. This one we will see later is a double waveform calculator. The trigger edge may be rising or falling and also the accuracy of the trigger and this trigger sync mode. At the bottom, we have the measurement area. We, we may have here two different values, like the distance between these two lines that are the cursors for measuring distance, uh, and these other two to measure difference in voltage. We could show the, the, that there. And uh, also we have here the frequency of the signals, you see it's 10 kilohertz, and this is a configurable field we will see later and some information about the sample uh, depth of the, of the memory and um, and the files names and things like that we'll see later okay now at the left you have these uh, kind of uh, arrows the most important one is this one that is the blue one is the zero value and the green one is the trigger value Okay, so uh, these two white are the cursors for voltage measurements. Here we have the, the menus and uh, we, uh, we move through the menus with these cursors. So let me explain you. With this one we just move up down. Uh, with that one we go inside the menu and we change the value like time base here just with this one, okay? So that's all. Uh, with this one, uh, usually what you could do is just stop sampling or reactivating the sampling. Okay, let's go through the different menus. The first one is the Y axis function setting that configures voltage, this axis and this other time. So Y, uh, y N, you have different values inside. The first one is the Y range, is the voltage, okay, between two vertical lines. You could reduce that or increase that. It just start uh, vibrating because the trigger is out of the function. The trigger should cross the function to stop it. Okay, here you could change the coupling, the coupling between AC and DC. Here you could change the uh, proof attenuation by default is 1x, but you could have a 10x voltage attenuation if you buy a, that kind of proof. And you have here the offset, so you could move the function. Okay, 
and uh, here you have these cursors so it just you move okay you move the cursors this one or this one you just move it so you could see here the difference in voltage between the two cursors and here to hide or show the cursors okay the next one is the x axis function setting inside it you have the time base that is the distance between two vertical lines in the grid so you could like to zoom or, or see it wider changing the value of the time base the view position you could move and it will go through the progress line okay so you could move through the function if you just keep it it, it will continue moving okay different speed and uh, here you have the sample depth it's 4k you could increase to 8k the, the, the amount of sample store the cursor function cursor so if you change it change the distance between these two cursors okay and you could also hide them or show them the next one is the trigger function setting the first you have here is the sync mode it could be auto could be normal and uh, could uh, be uh, just uh, single so in the moment it happens the condition uh, it just stopped you could reactivate with this one you see the green just a second and and reactivate and uh, scan normally normally we have in auto okay the trigger mouse is or falling or rising edge uh, out of feed is an automatic adjustment so you just click to the right it appear f and two times and it will just Auto adjust. It is already auto adjusted. Okay, so um, uh, you, now you have to to the threshold. The threshold is the horizontal trigger in position. So you could move the trigger. You see now the trigger is out of the function. I move it in the function. Okay, this is the sensitivity. That is the the horizontal uh, triggering accuracy, and you could hide or show the trigger line okay let's go to the next one measurement function setting is just that you go through these function settings and you will see the values here so you could set what you want to show in this field okay just keep that one and it will stay there first before explaining the ex that is the waveform calculator function setting i will explain the file system saving the saving and loading function setting so you click here and you could save in different formats and you could load to different formats here is the name of the file that you are going to save you could change the name of the file just with this one or that one is a sequence you could download it from a pc uh, so for example imagine we save the that file okay and we store that as um, number zero okay so i click here to save and it will say file okay um okay so that's all so far so let's come back i explained you that because we will need that later okay so x is uh, the waveform calculator function setting this one is uh, it helps to compare from a that file store to the one generated so we store this function so if we go here and uh, we uh, change hide to show it will show a function that by default is stored by the by the oscilloscope but you want to use the one you store okay so you come back uh, to the fn and you load the dot file and it was the zero zero so you just click and you load that file and the left file is there now so you come back here and you could do comparisons between the one saved and the one that is recorded so i will just change the function okay that comes through uh, to the oscilloscope and what we can do here we go inside we could change the position of this function okay wherever and we could 
change the values. So you could have between data uh, that is the file store, or you could have minus data is a negative one, or the input that is this one plus d that is the sign function that I showed before, or uh, minus or the opposite one and that kind of things. Okay, so you could do this kind of comparisons just with one uh, single input scope. Okay, this one, SN, is the waveform output uh, parameter setting. So it, it just uh, creates a, a function that goes through here. It's not shown here, okay? So it's just you go here and you say, okay, the the output that I'm generating through here could be a square or could be a sine, triangular, uh, or so tooth. It's uh, three balls for the square one and two balls for the rest of the functions, okay? And here you have the frequency, you could change the frequency. In the case of the square functions, you could go up to one uh, megahertz. In the rest, you could go up to 10 kilohertz. And this last one is the duty. It's from zero to 100, is only uh, valid for the square wave generator. If you have selected the square one, okay? If not, it will not happen. So this saltus will not happen anything if you change that. Okay, the last one is ST. ST is the system function settings. If you go inside, you could change the backlight. So the light of the screen, if you go low, it will save battery. Uh, auto -cal calculates the zero. This one restore data for calibration. This one, uh, uh, just uh, you could change the standby time and the power off when the uh, oscilloscope is going to power off after 20 minutes not using that uh, the oscilloscope or something like that so basically this is all for this nice oscilloscope i hope this helps you thanks for watching